I thought it's about time I gave an update on uh, my brewery and the first part of my brewery is actually the control cabinet and so this is the bit they've been working on uh, for the past couple of months uh, putting together the parts, working out the schematics uh, trying to design it all now my brewery is um, all electric so I have an HLT a mash tun and the mash tun is heated with a um, hex or well, I call them hex, it's a uh, heat exchanger and then my kettle and my kettle's got uh, two elements in it so this is the uh, cabinet that I have to uh, control everything. I got uh, inspired by so look down here, uh, the electric brewery.com because they've uh, done a great job of setting up an all electric brewery. So I've been looking at their site and going through their documentation and uh, getting some good ideas from them. So, so far it's wired up as a test phase, uh, as a test cycle, sorry, and also wired up uh, to control nearly everything apart from the two water level indicators um, as I'm not sure whether to go with um, floats uh, magnetic floats for the water sensor or actually use um, proximity induction connections which might actually do a better job um, I'm just investigating that at the moment and the other thing I haven't got hooked up is a couple of these two little lights here with the pumps. Um, but yep, everything else is tentatively ready to go. Obviously too, I've got no elements connected to anything and nothing's wired up inside for the elements. Here's uh, my temperature probes coming in and I've had to place these in because the uh, PID controllers don't work without a sensor installed in them. Um, eventually these sensors will have a much longer line which has got a, um, it will have a shielded wire so that I can take it all the way to where they need to go in. All these outlets here will all be um, ducted through 25mm ducting to hide all the wires etc. Uh, this one here which doesn't have any wires is for my pump wires and sensors for um, the level indicator. The white wire that I, the white power cable that I have here, is the power for the main board to control all the lights, all the pids, etc., and control power to the uh, to the solid state relays. And then another power line, power cable that comes in to control um, the power that goes to the elements. And that may have multiple cables coming in because I want to keep everything under 10 amp rating. So I'll have one cable that will look after one element and another cable to look after another one so they're all on separate 10 amp circuits. And then of course I've got four cables that come out to control all, all of my uh, 2000 watt elements. So let's uh, plug it in, see what happens. Just make sure it's turned off. Yep. Alrighty. Um, when I first turn it on, I have a test sequence and the test sequence goes through and it just turns on all the PIDs and lights up all the switches, or all the um, pilot lights as long as all the switches are all in their off position. Um, so this means at a quick glance I can just turn it on and make sure that everything's working. I've got a timer that's counting down to 30 seconds. If I turn the alarm on, it should go off. Four. Three, two, one. Yep, that's enough of that little thing. So it just tests that all the lights are working, etc., and that everything's in the off position. I have a emergency button here which cuts off the power and it cuts off the power via a solid state relay inside the unit um, to all the elements, or actually to another bank of solid state, uh, actually. This cuts it off to a pole relay, a manual, a mechanical relay, and there's mechanical relays in front of all the solid state relays as well. So I've got a lot of protection in there. Um, I haven't calibrated my pids yet, so they're all running at slightly a different temperature, but that's okay. I haven't got around to uh, totally testing these yet. 
So, next thing I do is I turn my ignition on. My amp meter comes off, comes up. Um, all my lights turn off as they should do because everything's in the off position. Power light remains on. On the side here, I've got four CPU fans on copper heat sinks, and they're mounted on the solid state relays that are uh, inside the cabinet. I may turn these off and just have a switch to operate these when I need to, but at the moment I don't make too much noise. Now my controllers, I turn each element on, it shows me what which element's been turned on. It shows me that the has been turned on. It shows me that the heat exchanger's been turned on. And for my kettle, as I said, I've got two elements in there, so I can have a single or a double element. And these lights come on and on with the PID control that is uh, going to the SSR. So at a glance, I can quickly see which elements are turning on and which elements are turning off. Now there's no amps running through this yet because I'm not connected up uh, to any um, elements so that's a good sign if there was amps running through that it means I'm drawing power somewhere in the wrong spot. My button down the bottom, if I turn something on I should be able to hit it and it turns it all off. Still leaves the power on, still leaves the temperatures on so they can see what the temperatures are uh, because it would be important to actually know what is going on. The PID lights are still turning on and off, but there's no power going to the element as indicated by the pilot light. Now, let's have a little quick look inside and see what's going on inside it. Just uh, look at that, turns everything back on. Turn it all off again. And that plug out. See we're going inside the cabinet. Excuse the wiring, I've tried to make it as tidy as I can, but there's a lot of wires. I have a 12 volt um, power supply down the bottom to provide all the 12 volt power that I need for my pumps, etc. So I've got some small little 12 volt pumps. Um, some step down transformers for 5 volts to read my amps. I've got a shunt. The shunt has the main power coming in and there's the main relay that is controlled by the emergency switch down the bottom so that it turns off the power to all the other relays coming down here and these relays independently turn on with each element being turned on so they provide power then to the solid state relays which were stuck on the back of my heat sinks. Um, yeah, that's a little bit of spaghetti. But uh, it's taken taken a while to go through and to try and wire everything up and get everything running in the right circuits. There's a couple of interesting switches here. For example, this one that has six different switches on it. Um, and this is just so that I can run uh, different voltages through the switch as well. So as I turn the switch on I can run uh, 12 volt through to control some lights um, and the 200 and the 240 volts through to control the relay switches etc. And it just sort of separates out everything so that nothing gets in the way. And as with all the switches they all have, let's see if I've got to find a nice little switch here, they all have a normally closed switch and a normally open switch so I'm running a loop through my normally closed and that's my test circuit to make sure that everything's going to be working and then as with the switch above it's got an additional switch on it that's just running a little bit of power to um, an alarm system so that I can turn the alarm on and test the alarms all the main powers for the elements are running down here but nothing's been connected on the other side yet because I've got no elements to connect it up yet um, yeah, I think that's about it.